What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna learn how to make a DNA helix using SketchUp. Today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can uh, support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, um, please consider supporting me in the links down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're gonna do um, in this video is we're gonna use the extensions Curve Aloft and Helix Along Curve in order to create a couple helical shapes and then we're going to generate some different faces and some other stuff with that. So uh, to start off what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a line um, and it's just going to be a line that goes straight up and down. Um, it doesn't really matter what the height is or anything like that. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to select this line and I'm going to activate the extension Helix Along Curve, which I'll link to in the notes down below. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to give you a series of options for what you can do to create a helix. So in this case, um, we're going to leave the radius. I'm going to go ahead and set the radius to 4 inches and 4 inches just so that's easier. Um, just so those are easier dimensions to remember. And we're going to go ahead and set this to, we'll say, 3 laps. And sections per lap is just the number of um, segments that's going to be per lap. So in this case, we'll know, since we're doing three laps, that we'll have 20 sections. And then uh, we're not really going to mess with the rest of this right now, other than make sure create tube is set to no. We do not want to create a tube right now. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so when you click OK, what that's going to do is that's going to generate your helix. And you can see how that gives you this curving, spiraling shape centered around this line. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of that helix and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. And to do that, we're going to use the rotate tool. So you're going to activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key and then make sure you have this line selected and then move your mouse until you're centered on this center line. And when you do this, you can click on this center line and then click on this point and you can rotate this. Well, what we want to do is activate copy mode. So tap the control key, that'll activate copy mode and allow you to create a copy of this in a circle rather than using the move tool. And then you're just gonna move your mouse or you're gonna type in 180 degrees. So basically what you're gonna do here, and uh, actually now that I think about it, there may even be an easier way to do this, is we'll go ahead and create this object first and then we'll rotate this 180 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to go ahead and explode the group that's been created. And so when we explode the group that's been created, what we're gonna do is when Helix Long Curve creates this helix, it puts it in a group. Well, we wanna go ahead and we want to explode that so that it's just in here as a line. And you should, you should be able to see when you select this that this is a line with 60 segments. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the move tool in copy mode to move a copy of this up. And so what I did is I just tapped the M key, I clicked on this point, and then I tapped the control key. That puts me in copy mode. So you can see that's creating a copy of this line straight up and down. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create this copy and we'll call it two inches. So when we create that copy, two inches up, you can see how now I have two of these lines that create almost a ribbon shape. And so what we want to do is we want to use the extension curve aloft to fill in this ribbon. But in order to do that, we have to close this in. And so to do that, just draw a line from this point to this point, and then a line from this point to this point. And then all you're going to do is you're going to select all of these lines. So you should have four objects selected by the time you're done. I'm just doing a shift click. And so this should tell you you have 122 edges selected. So you've got your ends and your line. And what you can do is you can use the skin contours option of curve aloft. So if you click on that, you can see what this does is this comes in here and this creates a skin based on this object. And this works so well because each one of these segments or each one of these lines has an equal number of segments. So you can see how all curve aloft has to do is draw a line between the two segments, just like this. And so that's kind of filled this face in um, and created kind of our ribbon shape. And so we can go ahead and click in order to finalize that. And if you want to, you can name these in your outliner. You definitely don't have to, but it can kind of help you um, keep everything organized. So in this case, I'll just call this ribbon one. And so now that we've created this, um, first of all, if you hide this, your line should still be in here. This is going to be important in a second. 
Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select our ribbon, but we're also going to do something else. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this segment right here, and we're going to make a copy of it so that it's in the middle of this ribbon. So you can see how I clicked on this line. I activated the move tool with the M key, and then I clicked on this corner and tapped the control key to put it in copy mode, and I made a copy that's centered along here. And then we're going to take this line that we created and we're going to do a shift click and select the ribbon as well. And we're going to rotate all of that stuff 180 degrees. And we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode in order to do that. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to activate the rotate tool now that I have those selected. Click on this center point tap the control key to turn copy mode on and then you're going to make a copy of this 180 degrees in the other direction. And so when I do that, now I have two ribbons that are spinning in alternating directions or in different directions. So you can see if I look at it up and down, in fact, they're not even spinning in different directions, really. They're, it's just that this one is moving up at, I guess it's a frequency, a different frequency than the other one. And so now we've got our two ribbons. We're going to erase out this middle line, and we're going to do the same thing with Curvaloft. So in this case, we're going to have these two segments, and we need to draw a line between the two segments in order to close this off. And then we're just going to select all of these lines. And we're going to run the skin contours option. And this does a weird thing in here where it doesn't line everything up. It should because there's an equal number of segments in here. But for some reason, it has an error in here with a couple of these. And so all we have to do is Curveloft allows you to manually edit these. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click on this face. And you can see how it's going to pop this object up right here. For whatever reason, it doesn't map this object right. And so all you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to click and drag this. And you see how it won't let you set this on this segment for some reason? We'll just come in here and just drag it to the one right above. And when you do that, then everything will come in here and it'll line up. And you're going to have to do that a couple times just to make sure that everything's lined up properly. But you can see I'm doing the same thing where I'm clicking and dragging that line. Now everything lines up. So all of your segments are lined up. And so we're going to make one other change. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to generate the face in here. We just want to generate these lines. And so in order to generate our lines, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to select this option right here. So there's a box in here that looks like basically a series of vertical lines in a box, you're going to click on that. And you can see when, when it does that, Curveloft no longer generates the face in here. It just generates the lines. And we want these lines because we're going to come in here with pipe along path and create a tube along each one of these lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure this is clicked so that you don't have a face in here. And then just click off to the side. And you can see what that's done is that's generated a series of lines in a group that are running back and forth between the different segments. And so once you've done that, what you can do is you can go inside this group. So just double click inside this group to go inside of it. And you can do a control A to select all of your lines. And then there's, there's a tool that I'm going to link to down below called lines to tubes. And when you install it, then it's going to show up in your menu under tools and it's convert arcs, circles, lines to cylinders. And so you're going to select that and basically what you're going to do is you're going to adjust these settings until they're kind of what you like to see. And so in this case, you don't need to worry too much about follow me on curves. You can go ahead and say yes for create group. And in this case, you can go ahead and set the, the diameter to whatever you want. That'll be the That'll be the width of the circle, and then you can set the precision, which is the number of uh, segments in the circle that's created. So the more of these you create, the more geometry is going to be in your model. Um, in this case, I'll probably go ahead and set this to 12, just so these are nice and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then what that's going to do is that's going to generate all of these tubes along this curve. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And so now what we have in here is we have tubes running along this face um, to create kind of our DNA helix shape. 
And so you can see how the only problem with this is we've got these faces in here and they don't have any thickness and so the circles are, sh are uh, showing through and it looks kind of clunky. And so what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to use the extension Joint Push Pull. And if you remember, Joint Push Pull is the extension that allows you to push pull curved surfaces or surfaces that aren't flat, that are made up of multiple different surfaces in SketchUp. And so what we're going to do is we're going to double click inside one of our ribbons and we're going to come in here and we're going to activate the option for joint push pull. And what we want to do, you can come in here and click and drag like this in order to create this geometry if you want to. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come in and I'm going to set my offset manually. So I'm going to click on this and type in one inch and then you can just double click on this face and it'll extrude this one inch. And in fact, one inch looked a little thick. I'm actually going to, let's try a quarter of an inch. And then we'll just double click on this face. And so you can see how this push pulls this out a quarter of an inch. And so then we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna do that with our other ribbon. We'll do the same thing. We'll set our offset to a quarter inch, double click in this face, and then it'll extrude this out. And so now you've got a ribbon, you've got your lines, and then the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this line that's in the middle right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that and click hide. And so now you can see what I have. And I had to go in there and hide both of them. But you can see how now I've got this kind of complete helix shape where these lines are running across. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Um, would you have changed anything in this workflow? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.